What's up guys, welcome to the show. I'm Brady here, as you all know, from Hemi Cruising. And today, it is, let's see, it is today, Friday the 18th. Yeah, Friday the 18th. And I'm about to head home to Taylorsville. And we are going to paint correct the car, ceramic coat the car, and all that before Cars and Coffee, which is Sunday. So... Uh, this is going to be like a two-day procedure. That's why I'm starting on a Friday because ceramic coat really needs to dry for like 24 hours. So hopefully, I probably won't show you like the whole process, but we're going to we're gonna wash the car. Uh, ugh, excuse me. I usually don't get up this early. We're going to wash the car. We're going to clay bar the car to decontaminate the paint. We're going to do like a three-stage polish to correct it, get all the scratches and swirls out. And then we're going to put Adam's Polish's ceramic coating on it. And uh, Luke may come up to see us in a little bit. A few other car guys may come up to see us in a little bit. I, I really don't know. But I'm going to go and have a good day just spending time working on my car. And hopefully the front suspension doesn't fall apart on the way up there. But uh, that's the story. I'll explain that uh, probably a little bit later in the video. But right now, let's just go on ahead and get started heading north because it's like a 60-mile drive. So let's get to it. Well guys, while we're driving along here, I figure I can uh, take some time to tell you about what's going on with the car. Uh, so, about three weeks ago, uh, I was driving the car for work, and I stopped to gas up, and I was doing my normal walk around inspection, just kind of looking at the tires, this, that, and everything else, and, uh, excuse me. I knew the tires were bad on the car. Um, I knew they had been experiencing some significant wear and uh, needed to be replaced soon. But I, uh, I found catastrophic tire failure on the front. Uh, the inside and outside edges of the tires had worn all the way down to the belts, the passenger side being the most significant of the two. Um, so I immediately stopped driving the car for work and made arrangements to go put new tires on the car. So a few days passed, went and put new tires on the car, didn't drive it anywhere except to the tire shop. Drive it to the tire shop, they put the new tires on the car, throw it on the alignment machine because I want the alignment checked, and tell me that they cannot align the car because it needs new lower control arms, new ball joints, new upper control arms. So I replace all that, or I drive the car home, let it sit, and then I order those parts and replace all that, thinking, okay, cool. Now I can go get it aligned, everything's gonna be fine and dandy. Take the car to a different tire shop this time to get it aligned. They tell me that they were only able to set the toe and the camber However, they can't adjust the caster because the engine cradle needs to be moved. Uh, and that the uh, they can align everything except the caster. So they send me to the Courtesy Ford dealership in Hattiesburg. They're like, Courtesy Ford, they're like, we know it's a Dodge, but Courtesy has the tools needed to adjust all that. They'll do it quickly, everything will be fine, they'll get that adjusted for you, and you'll be good to go. So I drive the car to Courtesy Ford. 
Courtesy puts it up on their machine and plays with it for over three hours. And then comes back and tells me, we can't adjust the caster. The left, or the driver's side front is still way off. And I was like, we were all like, hmm, okay. The passenger side is showing nine degrees of caster, positive caster, and then the driver's side is showing uh, 11 degrees of positive caster. So, courtesy's like, we think it's a bent spindle. So, after checking and seeing that a price of a spindle, one spindle is $500, I decided to call Mopar directly. So I called uh, I called Tim at Kim's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Laurel, and Tim connected me with their service manager who told me that he would advise me to take the car to a collision center before anything else. Um, I don't think that the car's ever been in a collision. That's just my opinion. My co I know my cousin didn't wreck it, um, but I digress. Took the car to a collision center. Uh, they told me to drive it this weekend, which is what I'm doing right now, drive it to Cars and Coffee, and then bring it to them first thing Monday morning. They marked my frame in a few places. They want to see if the frame's bent, and they actually want to verify if the uh, spindle is bent. However, the guy that I talked to at Smith Brothers, which by the way, shout out to John 2JZ, go follow him on Instagram, he works at Smith Brothers Collision, he's hooking me up with those guys to get this all taken care of, hopefully. The guy that I spoke to at Smith Brothers, I believe his name was Christian, uh, told me that he personally doesn't feel like it's a frame issue, he feels like that the guy that rebuilt the front suspension on the car, put the new control arms and stuff, put something on backwards. But I digress. I'm driving it like they told me to. And uh, I'm going to take it to them first thing Monday morning and see what they can do about it. But they're, they tell me that Caster is not going to wear down the front tires. I don't know how true that statement is. But uh, I'm taking their word for it. If my $900 Goodyears get screwed, well, I know who to come after. But we're gonna I, I'm at a loss everybody I've talked to is at a loss to explain how this is happening um, my bets are either going to be on the suspension wasn't put back together right or a blown strut uh, probably on the driver's side and then my last bet is going to be on a dent in the front cross member that's right by the steering rack uh, if the dent's the case, I'm just going to drive the car as is, rotate the tires every 3,000 miles, and call it done. The car is not driving for Domino's anymore. It's just going to be my weekend and long distance car. So, you know, I, I don't even think I'll probably put 15,000 miles a year on this thing. So, I, when I was driving last year, in the year that I owned the car, I put almost, huh, huh, you gotta forgive me, I'm sorry, it's too early in the morning. In the year that I drove the car, um, I put almost 30,000 miles on it. So if we can cut that down drastically, and again, driving for dominoes, uh, you gotta do a lot of sharp turns, U-turns, stuff like that, and that eats at your tires. So. I feel like if we can just get the car off the road for Domino's, we will be in much better shape as far as this whole tire situation goes. But that's what's going on with the car right now. Um, we're almost to Taylorsville, and we're going to get started detailing or paint correcting or whatever you want to call it. So I'll update you whenever we get there because I just want to enjoy the last 15, 20 minutes of this drive. So. Until next time. All right, guys. Well, we have made it to Taylorsville. We're in the shop, and we're going to go on ahead and get started. There's the car. So the, what the paint correction is going to do is, is it's going to fix all these little water spots in here, 
really get the paint back to what it's looking like, uh, to what it looked like off the factory and then we're going to protect it by applying Adam's ceramic coat. But right here kind of in this area is everything that we're going to need to get started on this process. So first off, you always got to have your subway to, you know, that way you got energy to do this, but the main the most important thing when it comes to paint correction and ceramic coating is surface prep. So what we're going to use is a product from Adams Polishes. This is their strip wash. Now, what the strip wash does is it's a uh, it's a slightly acidic based car shampoo that will basically remove any old waxes, sealants, uh, basically anything on your paint, and it will leave you with a bare naked finish. So we're going to use some of this combined in, a, in our. Uh, we're going to put some of that in our Adams wash bucket with a grit guard and we're going to use a microfiber wash pad and we're going to scrub the surface down, get all of that old crap off of there and then we're going to come back with uh, some, some of this. We're going to dip our clay bar into the bucket and go over the whole car, clay it down because you want the surface to be as flawless as possible beforehand. Then after we're done with that, we're going to come in with our Torx polisher. That's a dual action polisher. Um, and we've got four stages of compounds right here from Chemical Guys. V32, 34, 36, and 38. And we're going to come back with that, polish the whole car to a mirror finish. And then we're going to hit it with our Adams Polishes ceramic coating. So, that being said, Let's go on ahead and get started with that, and uh, I'll show you a little bit as we go. I'm not going to record the whole... Alright, so the first step in any detail job is to paint your car white. Alright guys, so at this point in time we have the car clean for the most part. Um, everything's been washed with the Adam Strip Wash. Uh, one thing that I want to note is that the Adam Strip Wash foams up a lot more than the regular car shampoo. I don't know if it's just because of the formulation or what's going on there, but it foams a lot. Like, it creates a lot of freaking suds. But now what we're going to do is clay bar. Now, this is also a very crucial step because if you're polishing on top of dirty paint, you're not really solving the problem. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make it smooth and to make it smooth you have to clay bar So I'm actually going to foam the car down again with a foam gun And then we're going to take a clay bar and go over the whole thing now the brilliant thing about Adams is all of their shampoos uh, Is that they can be used as a clay bar lubricant Which is great because you don't have to waste detail spray or anything like that now that being said you can use uh, Adam's detail spray as a clay bar lubricant. You can also use their glass cleaner as a clay bar lubricant. Um, and of course, pretty much any quick detailer you can use as a clay bar lubricant. But I'm just going to go on ahead and foam the car down again with a strip wash just to ensure that all the contaminants that the clay bar pulls off the paint will be removed from the vehicle. Um, so I'm going to go on ahead and get started on that now. After I get done with that, we're going to pull the car into the shop dry it and then get started on polishing it so let's go do that all right guys so the car is now completely clean and clay barred i pulled it into the shop and we're going to get started polishing now i know you don't want to see all that and be bored out of your mind so i'm going to skip over all that but i will show you what it looks like whenever i, uh, I get done now, like i said as far as stuff that i'm using We've got uh, the Torx dual action polisher here. This is from Chemical Guys. Three different pads. So we've got a cutting pad, a polishing pad, and then a finishing pad. And then we have four of their compounds, V32, 34, 36, and 38. Um, so we're going to start out with the V30, uh, probably the V34, and then work our way up. Um, if the V34 isn't enough, then I'll step down to the 32, and uh, we're going to see what happens with that. And then after that's done, we will apply our ceramic coating. But I'm going to get started on that. Uh, wish me luck. This is going to be a long process, so I'm going to get very tired. But it's just what has to be done, so let's go get it done. 
All right, guys. Well, I guess it's a good enough time as any for a little update. Uh, I just finished the rear driver's side uh, quarter panel. Um, I've done the door, the passenger door, the driver door, the rocker panel, and then the front fender and the hood. Uh, this is just stage one. This is a very time consuming process that I've come to find out. And by no means is it perfect yet, but it's getting there already. Uh, I'll show you back here on this quarter panel. Here you can see an unfinished one over here. There's water spots all in it. There we go. You can see there's water spots all in it. And then if you come over here on this side, you'll see well let's see if we can catch the gloss you can see right there that we've just about eliminated most of the water spots in the paint uh, still a long way to go um, there's a few areas that I'm gonna go back over again like right in here on the doors is uh, giving me some problems and then the hood is decent but I've come to the conclusion that the issue on the hood is that the hood is what takes most of the abuse of the car, of uh, the elements, the rain and all that. And as you can see, it's covered in trash right now. But already we've got tremendous gloss coming off the hood just in one stage. But I'm going to continue to refine it and tweak it. And hopefully I can get it where I want it. And like I said, I'm not going for perfect on this but I'm trying to get it better than what it is right now and I am I'm pleased with the results that I'm getting so far but there's still a lot of work to be done and I'm probably about to have to leave soon and go uh, tend to some other business but nothing like a late night car detailing session but I just wanted to give you a little update uh, and a matter of fact while I'm got you here this polisher works great. I am in love with this thing. I don't know why I didn't buy it sooner. Uh, it does a great job. The pads are reusable, so you can go and wash them out and uh, reuse them. And the Velcro on the polisher, they're great. I love it. Um, it's holding its speed very well. And uh, as far as these compounds, now, these aren't like 3M compounds that are going to give you... 100% clarity, this, that, and everything else. But these compounds are pretty good, too. So, uh, I'm going to keep hammering away at it, and hopefully I can get it to where I like it before too late tonight, and then get some ceramic coat on the car. Like I said, I'm not going for perfect, but better than what it was when I drove it in here. So, I'm going to keep hammering away at it, and I'll... All right, guys. Well, uh, first off, it's a brand new day. Um... I stayed up until about 1.30 last night, polishing and getting the car done, and uh, it's as good as it's going to get right now without taking some extensive work. So I'm just going to go on ahead and paint or ceramic coat it as is. Um, I'll give you a little look. I got the finish looking uh, actually a good bit better than what it was whenever I pulled it in here. We eliminated most of the water spotting, uh, really brought back some clarity to the paint, and I got it looking pretty doggone good. You can actually see my reflection in it now. So, that being said, if the camera will focus, that being said, I'm going to go through and we're going to ceramic coat it. I took the spoiler off because it's easier to do it with the spoiler off, but I'll ceramic coat the trunk and then put that back on. Uh, so how we ceramic coat is actually pretty easy. So Adams Polishes makes a ceramic coating kit and it comes with everything you need. It comes with a bottle of ceramic boost. This is like a, uh, this is like a revitalizing spray. Uh, this is what you use to prolong your ceramic coating. You apply this, I think, every three to six washes. And uh, that will help revitalize your ceramic coating. They give you a bottle of coating prep, which is basically an alcohol-based solution that's designed to clean the surface of the paint and get it ready. 
Uh, they give you some nitrile gloves because ceramic coating is pretty uh, uh, tough on your hands. Um, if you get it on your hands, it's basically not coming off. They give you two microfiber applicator pads because that's what you're going to use to apply the coating. They give you a paint coating instruction manual and then they give you two single plush microfiber towels which I have over there because I put them with my, all my other towels. So uh, the coating itself is pretty easy to apply apparently. If you look at the instructions here, you, uh, you polish and then after all of everything has been clayed and polished, you use the coating prep to leave the paint bare and free of residue. Uh, put the coating on the applicators, apply, wipe it off after it starts to rainbow, and then move on to the next area. So, we're going to get started on that, and hopefully it will come out looking somewhat decent. And I'll let you know how it goes. So, I'm going to get started on that, and I'll see you in a few hours. Alright guys. So I actually want to show you how to apply the uh, Adam Ceramic Coating. Um, I've done my whole car with the exception of this fender. So I want to show you how it's done. Now first thing is you need two microfiber towels. When you buy the kit they will come with two single soft uh, microfiber towels. These are designed to be one time use only. Uh, they're designed, to, these are to be thrown away. Except for the one that you use for the ceramic prep which is on this one. The ceramic prep one can be washed out and reused but the one that you use to buff off your ceramic coating uh, that one has to be thrown away. You can't save that one. So that being said what you want to do is is in your kit you're going to find a bottle of coating prep and you're just going to want to take and spray that liberally on the fender and then just give it a good wipe down. Make sure you get everything best as you can because this chemical is designed to clean this surface and you want the best possible adhesion for your coating. So give it a good wipe down. Make sure it's clean. Let it dry for a few minutes, and then after it dries, you'll notice it'll haze away. There's still some right there, got some down there. Give it a few minutes, but in the meantime, you can go on ahead and be prepping your ceramic pad. Now, the ceramic coating comes in this little bottle right here. It's got a childproof cap on it. That lets you know that it's, uh, it's some strong stuff. And what you're gonna wanna do is, is whenever this dries, we're making, I'm just checking to make sure that there's, see if it's drying right. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. It's drying like I want it to. Puff out that little, little imperfection right there. And you just want to go over it one final time and make sure that the paint is just like you want it because once you put this coating on, there's no going back for the next two years. So I've got it like I want it. The finish looks good to me. I'm going to go on ahead and undo the cap on the Adam ceramic coating. You just want to dribble a little bit here onto your applicator pad. Let it soak in. Put your cap back on your bottle of ceramic coating because you don't want this stuff to dry out before it's supposed to. And then you're going to start up here at the edge of the panel and just run the applicator over the panel, making sure that you cover the entire surface of whatever it is that you're coating. In this case, it's a fender, so. We're gonna, I like to go along the edges of the panel first and then work my way in. That just seems to work better for me. Make sure you get around all of your badges, all of your trim, stuff like that. Kind of cross hatch 
your patterns as you go. That way uh, the coating will level out properly. And then after a few minutes, you're going to see it kind of start to rainbow up. You're not really going to see this effect on camera all that well. But you're going to see it start to rainbow up. And that takes about 15, 20 seconds. Um, just, you know, sit around, kill time for a few minutes. And uh, after that happens, what you want to do is you want to get your towel that you've been wiping your coating down with originally folded into your force. I'm going to give it just a few more seconds here. And you just want to buff it off. You don't want the coating to dry on the finish. Uh, I know that sounds kind of weird because you want the coating to remain on the car. But the brilliance of this stuff is, is that once you put it on your once you put it on your paint, it bonds instantly to your paint. So what you're doing is wiping off the excess, and in like in way of doing that, you're also leveling the coating and making sure that it's a smooth application. And that's all there is to it. That's how to apply uh, Adam's paint coating, their ceramic paint coating. Uh, I'll drop a link to it down below. And one thing to note is, is that once you put your coating on your vehicle, do not drive the vehicle uh, in the rain or expose it to any water for at least 24 hours. Uh, after 24 hours, what you want to do is you want to get the ceramic boost that comes in the kit. This is a SiO2 infused uh, spray detailer. Um, it can also be used as a standalone product if you don't have a ceramic coating. But what this does is what you want to do is after 24 hours, you want to spray the whole vehicle down with this, wipe it, and then buff it to a shine. And that will help lock your coating in place, and your coating will be ready to take years of abuse then. So uh, that's how you put it on. All right, well, I've made it back to Hattiesburg, and I have discovered a wild Thomas painting his wheels. I'm not, this is not paint. This is very good stuff, brake dust repellent. Uh, I took a 1,500 mile round trip to uh, Walt Disney World in Florida and they were not horrible. They were completely black when I got back. So, if you're a car enthusiast, I'd suggest using this. Thomas has also upgraded to the cool boy drilled and slotted rotors. Yeah. But a new development. Uh, I can't remember where I was last. Uh, we were going to, um, where were, we were going to grilling and chilling, and then I never uploaded that video. Uh, yeah, not much. Yeah, for real. But I've made it back to Hattiesburg. We got a few more things we got to do before, uh, cars and coffee tomorrow. I got to vacuum out the floor mats. Um, I want to... I have an issue with the driver's side wheel that I need to fix because I hit a little mud hole, but I'll fix all that and I need to vacuum the floor mats. But other than that, uh, it's going to be an early night for us. No staying up to like 1 a.m. Hopefully not. Because we got places to go. We got to be up at like 4. Yeah, so. got to be at what, 5? Yeah, 5. So. Why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know. I don't know. But in the name of cars. That's right. It, it's freaking cold. Yeah. I just washed my car in there. Nice. It's like 50 when I started but, Uh probably gonna end this video off right here. Um and we'll pick up again in the morning, but that'll be a completely different video. So um if you want a link to the Adams paint uh the uh ceramic coating kit, that'll be in the description below. Um, the link to the Torx polisher, that'll also be in the description if you want to check that out. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I think that's it. So if you want to check all that out, just uh, look in the description. All of it will be there. But we'll see you tomorrow morning. My name's Brandon, and I hope you all have a good one.